Hey everybody, welcome back. So I wanted to come on today and talk about um, trauma and uh, medication withdrawal, adverse effects from medication, um, as well as maybe what was going on initially that might have gotten you on the medication to begin with. And, you know, as you guys know, I'm a therapist of uh, 30 plus years. Now I work as a coach and a consultant um, with people in the United States and outside of the United States, specifically around issues of anxiety and any kind of nervous system sensitization, whether that is brought on by a complicated benzo withdrawal and a a psychotropic medication withdrawal, or people that have developed, um, you know, pretty profound uh, disabling anxiety disorders, whether that's panic, um, whether that's social anxiety, whether that's generalized anxiety, whether that's uh, agoraphobia, whether that's depersonalization, derealization, whether that's OCD, intrusive thoughts, all of it. So, um, but I wanted to come on and talk a little bit about trauma because in my life as a therapist, um, and again, just as the disclaimer, I am, even though I work that way uh, on these messages, you'll always see my disclaimer that this is for informational and educational purposes only. This is not to diagnose or to treat or to serve as a replacement uh, for medical or clinical care advice. So I want to make sure that I say that, especially when I get into a topic as loaded as trauma can be. And I'm not going to, I'm going to basically kind of skim the surface here. We're not going to do a deep dive, but I wanted to come on and talk about the idea of trauma because so many people reach out to me in my coaching and also in my practice before all of this, you know, with the idea of, you know, there must be something that has happened. I can't, I don't know exactly what it was, but there might be a complex PTSD picture, which is like ongoing trauma in my life. Um, There may be, have been this event that I kind of don't know about and what might've led you to get on a benzodiazepine or an antidepressant might've been um, a nervous system sensitization that was brought on by your stress bucket overloading. The problem is that when the stress bucket overloads and you tip into a whole bunch of symptoms, like let's say insomnia or panic attacks or depersonalization or intrusive thoughts or OCD or um, agoraphobia or different phobias, uh, increased fear across the board, all kinds of physical symptoms, that in and of itself is a trauma. And this is where I think a lot of people miss the boat. A lot of therapists miss the boat. A lot of coaches miss the boat is, you know, the experience of the stress jug tipping over and then all that comes with it. And then getting super freaked out and scared by that is, is a trauma. But what we tend to do as therapists and as coaches is we tend to then start looking back. Where did it all go wrong? Was it your childhood? Was it this? Was it this bad marriage? Was it this bad relationship? And while all of that might prove to be interesting, what we really need to do in that moment is to help people in the here and now learn about their nervous system, that it's sensitized as a result of it being sensitized. You're in the land of all these symptoms. And what do we do about those things now? And then that goes into kind of that acronym I use deal, which is to decide it's a nervous system problem. Um, Work on a mindset and behaviors that are going to be um, gearing you up towards a, a shift into being a ninja of indifference. Okay. So Again, let's just say before you ever got on the medications, maybe you went on the medications because of symptoms that came as a result of nervous system sensitization. That wasn't really picked up. Things got kind of psychiatrized, right? And we moved into the land of a lot of different psychiatric labels. Maybe that's what landed you on a benzo or a medication to begin with. Um, or, and, or let's say like, for example, for me, that it wasn't my entry in. My entry in was that I had a reaction to an antibiotic my nervous system kind of blew up and I was put on medication to kind of help calm that down, had a bad reaction to the medication, struggled to get off of it. Um, But the trauma of the withdrawal, when I tried to get off of it and had so many problems and my life became so unmanageable and all the symptoms came as a result, you know, the depersonalization, the derealization, the panic, the fear, the irrational fear, the just feeling like, you know, you're going to come out of your skin, um, the, the, the body electricity, the, all of it, you know, um, that was the trauma. That was my trauma. But what happened was I was, because I was in a traumatized state, um, the people in my life who had been trained like me, no offense to anybody. I was in that, I was a cog on that wheel too. 
started looking at me and saying, wow, you are in bad shape. You're, you're a nervous wreck. You're suddenly, you know, agoraphobic. You're, you have depersonalization. You're having weird intrusive thoughts. Uh, we have to go back and find out where the trauma is. We've got to resolve it. When the reality was I took a medication, my system blew up. I had a lot of symptoms. They scared the crap out of me because of the duration and the intensity. And that was the trauma. So this is not to say that you can't have um, um, pre-existing trauma before benzo withdrawal or med withdrawal, or that you couldn't have, um, if you're if you're listening to my channel and you're not dealing with a medication con- discontinuation, you're dealing with just anxiety in general or OCD in general, it doesn't mean you couldn't have also had a traumatic event or some complex trauma in your life you know, as as well as an anxiety disorder. But the idea that, and again, I was a cog on this wheel, that when you present with nervous system sensitization issues, whatever brings them on, that the answer is to start doing this deep dive into where it all went wrong. And again, while that can prove to be interesting, it might even for some people prove to be helpful. And for some people, it might prove to be pertinent. What I have found across the board, more importantly, is that you know, everybody has their tipping point, right? So, you know, I'll just use myself as an example. Um, You know, being somebody who had been in the field working as a therapist for a long time, I was also a caregiver in my family um, on multiple levels with with multiple sets of different people in my family. So I'd been in a kind of a caretaking role for, you know, 20 years um, when I think my nervous system kind of tapped out. I took a medication, I took an antibiotic. I think maybe it would have happened anyway, but I think that I was already pretty crispy and burned out at the time. Didn't have a really resilient nervous system at that point. I was probably pretty burned out. And so it tipped the scales. And when it tipped the scales, it created such a cacophony of scary symptoms that not only was I dealing with the new scary symptoms, but I was suddenly terrified of my mind and my body, right? Whereas, you know, I'd gone my whole life counting on it, depending on it. And it was traumatic. It was traumatic to feel like I was losing control of my mind or my body, as it would for anybody. But the problem was then we get kind of another layer of kind of gaslighting happens with well-intentioned people where they were like, well, this had to have another reason. There's another origin here. Um, let's start digging around. Well, the problem is if you are in an anxious state or in a sensitized state, in a heightened state, in a dysregulated state, like we are in withdrawal, like we are uh, when we're dealing with nervous system sensitization of any kind, what you're going to scan for is going to be worst case. It's going to be distorted. You know, you're not going to look back on your life and be thinking of unicorns and, rain, and, and rainbows. You're not going to be remembering the good times. You're going to be going back and because the lens that you're looking through is distorted. It's, it's, it's dysregulated. And so in your, it's, and it's fight, fight, freeze, right? So what you're going to be scanning for in that work, you're going to be picking out everything that ever went wrong. Well, we're not meant to do that. You know, our, our lives exist in a context of, you know, hopefully good and bad, tough and, and easier times. But when we're in a heightened state, a sensitized state, we're in an altered state of consciousness. When you're in a highly anxious state, you're in an altered state of consciousness. Think about a time when you were anxious, you know, in your life well before all of this. You know, in that highly, highly, highly anxious state, you know, you're not making a lot of wise mind decisions. And we know that about ourselves. So then to think that we could go back and reflect on our lives with any kind of perceptual accuracy is is kind of ludicrous, right? So you're going to start picking up stones and digging in your life and realizing, oh, it was, it was this bad marriage. It was this bad relationship. It was this thing that happened when I was eight. It was this thing that happened when I was 10. It was, And again, maybe when you're not in an altered state of consciousness, maybe when you are not in a heightened state, you can go back and look at those things, hopefully with some degree of of accuracy of perception, right? But I don't find it to be useful to be doing a lot of deep diving or digging when you're in an altered state, when you're in a heightened state. And so whether I have somebody come to me, like my old you know, clients from the past or whatever, saying, you know, I'm just really anxious. I've been dealing, you know, maybe they have kind of like subclinical, like OCD. So they're, they're not meeting criteria for OCD, but they're you know, they've got a lot of intrusive thoughts. They're having they're hypervigilant. They've got like all the markers for 
if not an anxiety disorder, then certainly the makings of an anxiety disorder. And I start digging around in their past looking for why they're so anxious. I'm having them dig around while they're in a heightened state. So they're in fight, flight, freeze. There's a, my body feels scared. I don't know why and it needs a narrative. That's what intrusive thoughts basically are, by the way. Your body is in a fight, flight, freeze state. The scales have tipped over. You're in a sensitized, heightened state. And now your, no, your body and your mind do not like to just feel fear for no reason. So it's going to start scanning for a narrative. Well, maybe it's this thing that happened when I was younger. Maybe it's trauma. Maybe there's something I don't know. Maybe there's more to the story. Or you're going to come up with worst case scenarios, which is where we start to catastrophize and ruminate and all of that. So what I want to kind of say to this is that for many people going through um, anxiety, uh, sensitization, or med withdrawal that is that is bringing up a lot of um, of these disabling symptoms, the trauma is is that that is the trauma, right? And could does that mean no bad things happened in your life before? No, it doesn't mean that. But if you hadn't really coded it as a trauma before, it I don't think it's really fair to be trying to code your life and figure out what's traumatic and what's not when you're in a trauma state, when you're in a fight, flight, free state. So our goal is always kind of in the here and now, which is let's let the nervous system calm back down. Let's get into a rest and digest state. Let's let the parasympathetic function be dominant rather than that sympathetic state. Again, fight, flight, freeze. And then we can begin to think about, okay, what were the precursors that led me to the benzo, that led me to the antidepressant? What were the precursors that have led to my stress jug tipping over? Um, And we can work on that from that angle. But again, I see a lot of people that are having a lot of intrusive thoughts, a lot of intrusive experiences, a lot of fear, a lot of terror, a lot of, you know, extreme distress while they're, again, either dealing with med withdrawal or other things. And from that vantage point, trying to go back and make sense of their lives. And I just don't think that is a fair place to start from. I I think that, again, what you're going to find, you're going to be looking for, number one. And number two, your your brain is a meaning-making machine. If you are feeling terror, it is not going to go and look for flowers. It's going to go look for anything that could be coded as scary. And again, if you are in a, in a in a state that's not in fight, flight, freeze, you might see that same thing as more benign, um, neutral even. Um, so I just wanted to kind of come on and talk about this. It comes up a lot, and um, I hope this was clear. All right, guys, take care.